Our first speaker is Jenny Tennyson, who is Technical Director at the Open Data Institute, which is a relatively new body, I think. Uh, Jenny has worked for a long time on linked data, uh, on DataGov UK, and continues this work now both on the UK Government Linked Data Group and the Open Data User Group. Jenny is going to talk to us about the changes and challenges of the move towards an open and transparent culture for both government departments and charities adapting to an open data world. So over to Jenny. Thank you. Um, yeah, so my name's Jane Tenson. I'm technical director at ODI, and ODI is a, um, a, a relatively new body, a not-for-profit that is set up uh, whose mission is to spread the word of open data and to support organisations who want to use it. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is, first of all, the move to open data that we're seeing. Uh, for two main kinds of reasons, both for the accountability and transparency reasons, and also because of the opportunities that open data brings to businesses and or other organizations. I'm going to talk a bit about skills and capability and how we can support people who are uh, trying to use open data and the kinds of challenges that that throws up. And I'm going to talk just a bit at the end about the role of the Open Data Institute and the kinds of things that we're doing there in order to help um, support organizations that are working with open data. Um, so I got my slides in very late, and my excuse is that yesterday was the launch of the Shakespeare Review and I wanted to put in some quotes. Um, so this is a quote from the Shakespeare Review yesterday, which was released about uh, public sector information and how we can make best use of public sector information. Um, imagine if we could combine all the data we produce on everything and use that to help us to make decisions. So that's the vision that we're working towards, being able to use data about all sorts of things in order to help us to make better decisions and therefore to help address some of the social challenges and environmental challenges and economic challenges that we have at the moment. So how does open data fit in with that? Well, open data is about making data available for everyone to use, not being limited by the funding that they have. So even if they're small businesses who are just starting up and don't have very much cash, not limited by who they are, whether they want to make a profit or don't want to make a profit, and not limited by what they intend to do with it. Um, being open data, that, that's kind of the, the, the classic thing, is simply having a license on it, which means that you can uh, reuse it as you will, that you're not limited by that. But actually, data that is really open needs to be properly reusable not only published with a permissive license that gives you the permission to do the things, but also machine readable in a standard format um, so that you can use computers to, to analyze and process it. But the final thing, reliable and trustworthy. If we're expecting people to build businesses, expecting people to make decisions off the back of the data that we're publishing and making available, then we need to provide some reliability to that information. We need to make it trustworthy. Um, if people are going to be mortgaging their homes so that they can build businesses, they need to know that that supply of information is going to be there in the long term and that they can rely on it. So we're aiming towards, at the Open Data Institute, we're aiming towards not just open data that is any old stuff, but open data that is good enough quality for people to build on and make decisions on. And the move to open data is being driven by two kinds of motivations. Over the last few years, we've seen a very strong set of motivations which are around tr accountability, making transparent what we are doing, um, particularly in the public sector. And some of that is coming through regulation, which I'll just go into in a second. But some of it is simply coming about because of citizen expectation. We expect to know more about what organizations are doing. The other side of the coin for open data is about opportunity, the opportunity to reach more people with the information that you have, the opportunity for efficiencies, greater efficiencies, particularly uh, around collaboration with our partners, with our suppliers. So I'll just talk about these in a bit more detail. Um, as far as our accountability goes, we've recently had uh, the Protection of Freedoms Act 2012, which introduces the right to data for those making freedom of information requests. 
And what that means is that whereas for freedom of information, then you have the right to get hold of documents, the right to be informed about, uh, about what's going on. With the right to data, you get the right to analyze the, the data that was used in order to make those decisions, to visualize it, to combine it with other information. Um, and what the Protection of Freedoms Act 2012 means is that anybody who makes an FOI request can say, I want the data for this made available in machine-readable form, thank you very much, and you have to comply if you're, if you're un FOIable. Um, that means machine-readable, and also under an appropriate license where the recommendation is to make that an open license, so one that, where people can reuse that, that data as they will. But this is part of a more general movement. Um, if we look at some of the uh, things that have come up with the horse meat scandal and, and so forth, what we see is a general move towards transparency, towards making information available. This is Tesco food news site where you can find out the, the information behind the products that Tesco is, uh, is selling. And the reason that they've got it there is because they understand that people don't have trust in their products because of the horse meat scandal and they want to be transparent in order to get that trust back again. So we're seeing open data as being a, um, a, a way of engendering trust in your from your customers. The other side of the coin, as I said, is opportunity. The other reason we see movement towards open data is opportunity. If you look at what's happened in film, music, in newspapers, in software, and is what, is now look, what is now happening in data is that we have massive shifts in demand because of the, in, because of the internet, basically. Now that those pieces of content and information can be shared very easily, people expect them to be available very, very cheaply or for free. And that means that organizations who have subsisted on selling that kind of content and data are now finding that they have to shift their business models towards something that is more sustainable in the new kind of culture. Um, so the way that um, we try and help people to, to see through this is to view open data not as a value proposition, not something that you are, uh, uh, not data is something that you sell, but data is something that you have as a resource that you can help with the rest, that can help with the rest of your business. So use it as a tool to uh, improve the rest of the value that you, you supply. Um, so, for example, when you view data as a resource that you can use to help the rest of your business, you can see it as a way of enhancing the services that you offer. By providing data on top of the services that you offer, then, then you provide an enhanced service. You get more, in, you get improved um, and informed customer relationships because people can dive into the information uh, more easily. And you get more diverse channels because as people build on top of the data, then they provide you different mechanisms of getting it out. So, for example, being used, being used in um, apps that, on, on your mobile, for example, even if you can't develop them yourselves within your organization, other people can, and therefore you get these extra channels to your customers. Um, the bits that make me most excited around using open data are how it can help with efficiencies internally within your organization, how using data can make you more informed and help inform your key activities, and how it can lower your costs because you're dealing with better information and therefore making better decisions. And the way that open data plays in here is by aiding the communication with your key partners. Your key partners can help um, to, to enhance the data that you are working with, and that data can be available to you. The project that I worked on before coming into the Open Data Institute was Legislation Gov UK, where we wanted to bring the nation's statute book up to date, and the team within government was simply too small and under-resourced in order to do that itself. Uh, the number of effects that would have to be applied editorial just, just was packing up and up and up. And, and what we did with Legislation Gov UK was bring in private sector to help us to, to enhance that information and to bring it up to date. Um, but by making it available as open data, those private partners could benefit from the changes that they and other people had made in a collaborative way. And we see that happening with Music Brains, with OpenStreetMap, and with other kinds of activities. So open data provides us with a facility for better collaboration with our partners, better data, and lots of cost savings as a result. 
So what does this mean in terms of capability? Another quote from the Shakespeare Review. Many existing businesses will have to engage with big data in order to survive, but we need to have the skills in order to do that. Few will have the capacity to innovate um, and create new approaches. So there's a real skills gap in, uh, in the marketplace at the moment uh, between people who, can, for, for the kinds of um, things that we, that we need to do with data to get the best out of data. And from an open data perspective, these come in, in two kinds of categories, capabilities. First of all, around data publishing. Of course, there's the technical capability in terms of publishing uh, data on the web, um, providing APIs, providing dumps, understanding how to make big data available. But there are also capabilities around the business and legal frameworks um, for providing open data. I talked about the opportunities, about the necessary changes in business models as open data becomes part of our culture. We lack the expertise in applying those new business models to, to our organizations. Um, the other aspect with open data is to get the best out of it, you have to engage a community. The more people that are engaged with your data, the more they are building on it, the better value you get out of it. So there is also a capability around dig uh, digital engagement. From the data reuse side and using it to make decisions, there's capabilities in terms of analyzing data, in terms of visualizing it and extracting the stories that make sense to people to use it to, in order to properly weigh the decisions that you make. And big companies, they can buy in that kind of uh, talent for analysis. But in the public sector, in the third sector, small businesses, you have other priorities about, uh, about um, the kind of people that you want in. And although this data is, is extremely useful, actually getting hold of that talent is, is quite difficult. Um, the way I picture it is that we're asking people to leap over a high bar. I say it's not as high as pictured, right? This is just an analogy. Um, and there are three ways in which we can address leaping over this high bar. First of all, you can train a person. You can get them, uh, if we take the, the pole vaulting analogy, you can, you can get them exercising, you can show them the techniques, you, you can put them through a training program that gets them fit enough and, and uh, ready in order to make those leaps. But there are other things that we can do too. We can provide the tools, the stick for pole vaulting, or a springboard, or a rocket pack that can get you over that bar. Um, so we need to be working on tools around publication, around analysis of data, around visualization of data, but also the tools that help people to make the business cases, that help people to understand the legal framework, that help people to understand the procurement uh, side of what, what they need to do, the contracts that they need to put together in order to maximize the benefits from open data. We can also cheat by lowering the bar a bit, making it just a bit easier. In order to get, get into a positive spiral where we can just um, uh, gradually raise that bar again. One thing is that better quality data, data that is published better, is easier to reuse. So that lowers the bar for people who want to reuse it. So one way of helping people who want to reuse data is not training them or providing tools, but getting the publication process right so that the, the data is published in a way that's easy to use. Um, of course, for publishers, that doesn't help. How do we lower the bar for publishers? Well, we focus on where the quality, the, on, on getting to a quality that actually makes a difference. <coughs> So trying to um, get to a place where people are publishing in, just in CSV rather than in Excel would be a massive step, for, for example. So focusing on the quality that makes the difference rather than the quality that, um, for now, doesn't add a massive amount of value for people who, who are wanting to use open data. So Open Data Institute, where I work, is trying to build this and support this new world of open data. Um, help organizations who are publishing data, help organizations who are consuming data, and most importantly, help them to come together and talk to each other. Um, uh, we're a non-profit, as I said. We have five years worth of funding from TSB, but we're also getting matched funding from uh, commercial organizations. 
Um, and our mission is to unlock that supply, unlock that demand for open data, and to show the value to talk about it and to communicate it. In terms of raising capability, which is one of the things that we're trying to do, we provide training. Um, so we have a series of Friday lunchtime lectures, which are really fun, always on different topics, um, and a series of taught short courses in order to help people to get to grips with open data. Not just the technical aspects, but also, as I say, the legal aspects and the business aspects. We also have help and advice online. We try to make everything that we do open um, by default. And so we have lots of guides online. We also offer consultancy services. Um, and we're also trying to build the tools that will help people to publish and to consume open data. Our most, um, the tool that we're working on mostly at the moment is this open data certificate, which is a, a kind of interactive questionnaire that helps lead you through the decisions that you need to make when you are thinking about publishing open data from a legal perspective, from a practical perspective of creating a, a regular supply, from a technical pers perspective, and also the kinds of social um, things that you can uh, provide in order to, to aid reuse of your data. Um, and that's it. That's my talk, Adapting to an Open Data World. Thank you very much. <laughs>